I got my new shaft. My wife will be happy. Okay. So, drive line one knocked out our new drive shaft right quick. Let's see if I measured it correctly. fighting me. Whenever your end caps fall off your U joint, make sure you check to make sure all your needle bearings are still in it. Struggle is real. Two and a half, joint to joint. And plenty of room to still remove it when needed. And it should be the same because this uh, axle, as it goes up, goes back from the sweep on my arms. I don't know why that is so stiff. Playing with my shaft. It's a dangerous game. Oh. Man. A few people brought up uh, indicating the transmission bell housing to the crankshaft. And in the paperwork, it actually does mention that. The Tremec paperwork says. Clutch housing. The clutch housing must be properly installed and aligned using a dial indicator. The center line of the transmission must match the crankshaft or severe damage to the transmission will occur. The clutch housing must also be perpendicular to the rear of the engine block. A maximum run out of five thousandths is allowable. Specific dial indicating instructions should be included with your clutch housing. I didn't get anything in the clutch housing, so I didn't even think about it. Um, so we're going to pop this out real quick because it's easier to do it now than later. Uh, we pull the tranny back out of this, do our indication to verify our uh, trueness to the center line so that we don't destroy a brand new transmission. So give me a few minutes, I'll have this thing back out of here. We'll do a indication reading and uh, then we'll hopefully just put it all back together. Otherwise, if we need to get some offset dowel pins, we will do that. But that's part of making it better. Sometimes you gotta go backwards. Uh, I've already taken my cross member loose. I'm gonna put a paint mark on that so I know where to put it later. That way I don't have to fiddle around with it. There we go, quicker reassembly. I think I lost my tranny jack. Found it. Bruce swiped it from me because he was doing a flex plate and a starter in a box van today. He made pretty quick work of it. He's a wonderful technician. I'm very blessed to have him on my on my team. is my enemy. Yeah, I'm 
I'm still going to pull the bell housing off and put it back up. But again, that's not a big deal. It's just four bolts. No reason to fuss. Just do it and get it done. The new dust shield from Lakewood with the Lake Lakewood bell housing does not require the starter to come out to be changed. So that's an added bonus. Run a chaser down both of those lower uh, the lower bell bolt holes because they came out kind of rough. I bought brand new bolts, so I don't think it was the bolts. Hmm. Yeah, they're a little they're a little ick. Let's clean those out. The first half of them feel really good. The second half not so much. Good to go. Well, time to take a merchandising break from all of this exciting stuff here. Uh, LucorAuto.MyShopify.com, the very first uh, gear from Lucor. The Church of Bad Decisions shirts are up. Uh, they are still on pre-order. Just to let you guys know, they're going to still be on pre-order for probably about another week or so. And then we're going to figure out exactly how much of this product you guys have ordered. And then we're going to get it all ordered from Gina down at the shirt gallery and get that all set up here. So, uh, LucorAuto.MyShopify.com. We have a t-shirt. We have a pocketed t-shirt. We have a zip-up hoodie. All that have the new design that Gina and her team designed for us for the original Church of Bad Decisions founding members. Uh, those are going to be good all the way up until... Uh, the beginning of June, and then at that point in time, those shirts are, and hoodies are going to be gone, and we're going to have just a normal member shirt, not a founding member shirt. So if you want to be a founding member of the Church of Bad Decisions, yes, get yourself some new Lucor swag. And that also is how you avoid doing any real work, is you film a bit and make somebody else do it. <laughs> now, back to him doing some more work. I bet my shouldered heads are what's causing those to bind. Because it was only on these two bolts. Yeah. So these shouldered heads are too big for the bell housing on the lower positions. So I'll have to clearance those. That explains why those bolts came out super tight. I didn't notice it going in for some reason. Must have used my big air hammer going in, I guess. Lots of extra ugga duggas. Well, the dowels are what really line this up. So we're going to put it on the dowels. And then we'll take our measurement in the morning when I have somebody else here to help me rotate the engine. Because I can't rotate the engine and look at the dial indicator. Where did I put my impact? Toolbox has wheels. Bring it closer, Rich. Yeah, it's not a strong enough base. Nope, gonna have to pull the clutch. That's all right. It is what it is. At least it'll be done right. Right-ish. Anything worth doing right once is worth doing right twice. Because when the stuff breaks because it's not in there correctly, it's a much worse scenario. And that's why they call it a bell.
This is about the point where I drop my stuff on the floor. one wire up in here and I sure enough caught it with that bolt. <laughs> That's funny. Now let's see how close this Lakewood bell housing is. That is not going to be easy to read. So now I'll have to roll, rotate this around and watch my gauge and find my high spot and then I'll have to do it again. So with that, I'm going to uh, head home. I need somebody to turn the crankshaft while this thing, while I watch this to find the high point and then we'll mark the high point and then we'll uh, do it again and see what our actual dimension is. So the first time we rotate it through will be us finding our uh, center and then we'll see how far it is off of center. So that's for tomorrow. For you guys it'll be really quick. Something's rubbing. Where's my clearance at? That's seven now. Oh, I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit right there. This is going to mess up my reading. So I'm probably going to need a different base to do this, but try it in a little different manner. Right now I'm at about 8 thou here from where I started. Which means it's probably going to need to go that way. It'll need to go that way. Alright, we're going to try this again. I think, I think my tool will clearance everything. So my start setting is at zero. Let's roll it through. See where we end up. That's ten negative. It's three positive. It's ten positive. 15. Oh, now I'm off. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm getting an accurate reading of that. I'll get it right sooner or later. The struggles of doing this stuff. Problem is my tool's too big. Don't hear that very often. Six. Going back down. That's our high point on our initial. So we're going to zero our indicator from there. And let's see what our actual run out is. I think. It's 10 foul. Uh, that way. 
11. Ooh, 15. So that's 15 thou that way. And now it's coming back. Basically it needs to go up, what, half? So it needs to go up 7 thou. I'm reading 14, 15 thou total. So to move it into the center would be half of that. So I need 7 thou offset dowels to move it vertically. And that should solve my alignment issue that I didn't know I had. <laughs> But now I do, and I can make it right. So the first time I took this around allowed me to find a high point or a low point, and uh, I set my zero there, which allows me to read through the sweep as I rotate the engine around. That gives me my my high point or my low point from my point of where I started. I rotated my engine back to its original place, and I'm back to zero. I'm 15 thou. Uh, away from the center line here, which means the whole bell housing is too high. So I'm going to get a 7,000th offset shim, install them to drop the bell housing down, and then I can take this reading again, verify my repair, and that should put me within my uh, required 5,000 uh, true to center line. And then we can put this thing back together for the last time. I decided it would probably be wise to clean the paint off of the mounting surface. I don't know if it'll make a big difference, but we're trying to do it right. Might as well do it right. So I'm going to put my bell housing in here one more time. My two lower bolts for my bottom position on each side of the block, the shoulders on my bolts were hitting the bell housing so I chucked them up in the lathe and I cut the shoulders off and then I painted them white so that I can identify those as the ones that I need to put in my low positions. I'm going to put the bell housing back up in here with all six bell bolts in it. I want to read my indicated uh, center line with all five bolts in it with the gasket surface clean. I'm interested to see if there's any change um, but That'll take care of my bind. And when I was cranking it over, I was hearing what sounded like ring gear teeth hitting the bell housing. So I want to see, I think I've got a couple spots I need to clearance on that. So we'll do that as well. You can see right there and right there, it looks like the flywheel may have contacted the bell. So we'll clearance that we don't have to listen to it in the car. This is probably overkill, but I'm an overkill kind of guy. I think the old bell housing would work, but ours was welded and repaired. And uh, this just makes for a better overall end product by putting the new liquid unit in it, hopefully. Chrome swivel doesn't fit in there either. There's a tight spot. Lakewood, you need a little more clearance there. Clearance, clearance. It's in good enough for what I want to do. So let me do this reading again, just for giggles. That's my zero. I'm still at zero. Four. Back down. Five. So we're 180 degrees, we're at five thou. 
just under five thou. And we're still just a hair under five thou. So cleaning off the back of the bell housing and using all five bell housing bolts to make sure that it was held down correctly made a difference. So with this reading, I'm at, I'm actually just a hair under 5,000, so I'm happy with that, and I can continue with reassembly. Um, I'm surprised it changed that much, or maybe I was just reading it wrong. I don't know. I'm glad I double-checked it. It is what it is. It's within specifications, so we can move forward. Awesome sauce. Thank you, Lakewood, for having a nice product. Um, could use a little more clearance for the lower side bolts, but other than that, pretty nice. So now I'm dialing it back to make sure that my zero here is still a zero. And that will give me, basically I'm off just a hair under five thou up and to the right. Because my high point, sorry, my low point is here, which means it's that way. But it's within spec, so I don't care. So you can see right here where my socket and the shoulder from my bolt were contacting the bell housing. So I'm going to clearance that a little bit. Also on the inside right here you can see where the flywheel was cleaning it off. So I'm going to clearance this shoulder down a little bit. There's plenty of meat there. So I'll clearance it there. And there. So I'll clearance it from there to about there. That'll give me room for the flywheel ring gear. So our clutch is back in, our alignment feels good, I went ahead and uh, <clears throat> I went ahead and clearanced my bell where I was seeing contact points and that my bolts, probably not enough to make a difference, but I did it anyway just because I'm me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this bell housing up in here, put the trans back in it, I'm going to put fluid in the trans before I put it up in here. And uh, then we'll be moving forward. Time to put this together for the last time. Yeah, I do want to fly away in this car. Put my fork in. Pop that thing right off there. Right on the floor. First light. I did put in the new adapter for the speedometer uh, drive cable. That's a uh, classic instruments component, SM17 FB adapter. And I put a 16 tooth gear in it. You see how that works out. I can't really clip to hold that in place. That's all in there. So transmission bolts. Dust cover, drive shafts, exhaust, fluid. Well, I've got my exhaust positioned, I think, as good as it's going to get. I'm going to go ahead and seam weld these uh, just to make them seal and hold together better than with the, uh, the gutter screws that were in there. So I'm going to burn these in. We'll get this thing welded up, put some fluid in it, and hook up the reverse lights. And that should, well, I still have to put the shifter back in, so a couple more things yet to do. Keep on plugging away, it doesn't fix itself. Yeah, this isn't going to be very exciting, but we'll flare the lens anyway. Helps have power, though. Light switch. Oh, yeah.
peu. Popcorn. Welds look like I have Tourette's carbon all over these pipes. These mufflers are leaking through the seams. <laughs> right there, right there, right there, right there. Not a great muffler. Maybe we'll upgrade that later with something from pipes. Just saying. I like the way they sound. Yeah, it's bent. He's bent down and in, so we need a new rod for this convertible top. Ah! 